Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for listening in at SCB 10X Second DeFi Virtual Summit. I'm Thai Panish, CIO of SCB 10X. And today, very excited. And we are bringing the house down, or in this case, SIP event down, because we are having CC, the founder and CEO of Binance with us. CC is definitely the man that needs no introduction. But uh, CC, in case that there is someone out there in the audience who doesn't know well about you and Binance, could you please give us introduction about you and Binance? Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, Mukai. It's good to talk to you again. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me here. So um, Binance is one of the larger crypto exchanges in the, uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, and in addition to a centralized crypto exchange, uh, Binance also have a, a, a sort of an ecosystem going on uh, with like wallets, uh, 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 Binance Smart Chain, um, many other uh, payments, et cetera, many other things. So Binance is now a sort of an ecosystem infrastructure services provider in, in this space. Um, so that's pretty much who, uh, so uh, I'm the founder and CEO. Uh, um, yeah, so that's pretty much who we are. Okay, great. Um, so like you mentioned, Binance is the largest crypto exchange today. Um, can we ask about what you think on the crypto overall landscape right now? Yeah, I think right now, um, so crypto have seen really interesting growth in the last few years. Um, so, and it's also branched um, on the centralized exchange side, we see users grow. And also, but we see many uh, new uh, applications of branches. We've seen the blockchain fundraising in 2017. Uh, we've seen DeFi in 2020. Uh, we've seen, um, you know, now NFTs are pretty hot. So we've seen uh, branching out into multiple applications. So um, the, uh, I think Bitcoin price is probably the most accurate indicator of the entire space. Um, so we've gone to a, uh, to a high uh, in March, April, and now we kind of uh, slow down a bit kind of uh, stabilizing around 30,000. So that's kind of where the industry uh, is overall in terms of user activities, et cetera, yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think, um, how can we drive further growth in the industry? How can we attract more adoption from the new users? Yeah, so I think fundamentally, there's really one very fundamental principle, which is to build products people use. Um, I think cryptocurrencies, blockchain has fundamental advantages compared to uh, traditional currencies, etc. So uh, now there's a whole new set of applications and use cases that can be, be, be built on top of this. Um, but it is a hard journey uh, because a lot of the infrastructure has to, has to be built first. So today, uh, up until today, uh, trading has been more of the acti acti uh, active application. Uh, so this is why the exchanges in this space are typically the larger players. But longer term, going forward, I think uh, payments, uh, other things, uh, games, uh, NFTs, arts, uh, all of this thing can, can be much bigger than exchanges. So um, yeah, so I think it's just a matter of building applications people use. Mm -hmm. How about in terms of uh, geographically or countries or regions that you are excited about? So I think, um, yeah, so it, it changes uh, from time to time, uh, given the sort of regulatory landscape changes, etc. So China was really hot in terms of both trading and mining. And but over the last, you know, four or five years, they've, uh, they've uh, uh, pushed out all of them. Um, so now we see that moving more to like North America, Europe, uh, etc. Um, uh, uh, the U.S. typically has a very strong technology innovation foundation. So we've seen many DeFi projects coming out of that. The technology innovation is still very strong. Uh, U.S. has very uh, tough regulate, oh, very um, strong regula heavy regulations on exchanges. So there's not a whole lot of st exchange startups in the U.S. Um, there's a few big players that's more established now, and they uh, and they're all growing. And Binance has a, um, a, a U.S. partner that's Binance U.S. So, um, and in Europe is a little, uh, again a little bit of a different story. But now uh, things are things are things are always dynamic changing. So, in Southeast East Asia, we see a huge amount of potential for uh, crypto growth. Um, and Southeast Asia, I think we've seen a lot more. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's been fairly friendly towards crypto overall, and we've seen a lot of more entrepreneurs and a lot more applications being in, built being built in the Southeast uh, Asia region as well. So each each region is a little bit different. I also think Africa is really interesting uh, because there's no existing financial infrastructure. Well, there's very few, and so it's they're, 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 uh, it's like a blank slate. And uh, so every region is a little bit different. Um, I think as a global as a global business, we need just need to be very cognizant of the fact that every region is different. We got to have different strategies for different places. Okay, um, CC. In terms of growing Binance, you often talk about 
um, Binance have plenty of room to grow. Yeah, curious, like uh, what area are you excited to grow Binance right now? So I think right. Um, so to be very honest, um, right, the whole in, the whole industry is very small. I think if you look at the uh, sort of global user adoption in crypto, that's probably less than two to three uh, percent. I think I'll probably put it around one percent to be safe, uh, and that's already seen like ten x growth in the last three four years. Um, so I think there's there's a lot more to grow. And in terms of applications, as I said, like exchanges are the sort of bigger application right now. But going forward, I don't think that should always be the case. Uh, if you look at the traditional industries, probably only t- less than 10 percent people actively trade stocks. Um, so I think active trading is not for everybody. And um, so I think payments, uh, games, NFTs, arts, all of this, thing, DeFi, all of these things have huge potential. Um, there's probably many things that we we well. There's probably uh, that, not probably. There's almost guaranteed that there are the things that will explode that we didn't think about. Um, that's how that's how how always the world works. Uh, what you don't expect actually blossoms. What you expect to blossom sometimes may or may not. So um, I think there will be many more interesting innovations in the space that we don't expect just to, just yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's go into CDFI. I, I think you are the one who came out with that term. Um, Binance Smart Chain BSC, of course, is uh, seeing quite strong traction um, in terms of TBL and also the projects that are building on it. So curious, like uh, maybe can you talk about BSC so far compared to what you have been expecting? How's the traction? Sure, sure. So BSC is one of those very good examples of something that I actually didn't expect it to to be to grow this fast this big. Um, I actually expected Binance Chain, the previous Binance Dex, um, still around. Um, I, I, we had very high hopes for that. Um, we thought that was a big, big thing. Um, and then uh, BSC is bigger. So it's one, uh, BSC is a uh, Ethereum, 100% Ethereum compatible blockchain. That's very popular. It's carrying somewhere between three to five X transactions compared to Ethereum, Ethereum network per day. So, um, um, it's very low faces, high capacity. Uh, we initially helped fund part of the project. Um, the, uh, uh, the community team uh, come to us for asking for a grant. Uh, we, sp- uh, we sponsored that and, uh, and because the blockchain will use BNB as the native currency. And so we sponsored that and it just, it just went, it, it launched. Um, I didn't have so many high expectations and it just exploded from there. Um, so now I'm tweeting about it, I'm uh, promoting it, et cetera. But uh, it's, a, it's a really a community project. So it's one of those things where um, uh, when I talk about CDFI, initially when I talk about CDFI, we can look, we can, we can offer similar DeFi services uh, for the CFI users, for the cent- cent- centralized exchange users, because right now that's still the largest user base in crypto. Most of users still use a centralized exchange. And um, we want to expose them and uh, move them towards DeFi. And Binance Smart Chain is one of those things that we got lucky with. And it seems to have uh, worked to a reasonable extent. And it's still early days, so we still have to see. Mm. What what do you think can drive further growth in BSC? More projects or different type of projects? Or? I think right now it's just more projects, different type of projects. That's exactly right. So um, I think right now we need more developers developing more applications. Um, but right now, with the good thing is Binance Smart Chain already had the largest uh, active user base in terms of DeFi <laughs> platforms or DeFi blockchains um, or DeFi ecosystems, however you want to call it. Um, so now it's a uh, quite uh, good. It's, it's an easy decision for uh, blockchain developers to develop on Binance Smart Chain, and um, the more applications we get, the more users we, uh, uh, it will get as well. So uh, now that there should be a, a positive, uh, virtuous cycle. So um, I, I think I think yeah, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy that it turned out that way. I'm just doing my part to contribute to this whole ecosystem. Got it. Okay. So curious, like um, right now there are many R1. Uh, and also we have many out to launching. How, how do you see BSC, um, you know, coexist with the, all these new out to that coming out? Yes. So um, I think right now, um, the, my view is um, it's great that we have so many different solutions coming out, level one, L2, et cetera. Um, they all have different, slightly different use, uh, usage patterns, uh, slightly different user experiences, um, et cetera. 
So my view is basically the more we have, the better. Um, so Binance Smart Chain is one, one player in this ecosystem. The more players we have, the bigger we can make the ecosystem. So um, I think that's good. Um, I don't see them as competition uh, because the industry is so small right now. Um, uh, there's like a whole large virgin like land out there for all of us to explore. So the, the market is not saturated. So the more, the more innovations we have, the better. And we can copy from each other, learn from each other, et cetera. So I'm actually not driving Binance Smart Chain. Um, I actually don't really know uh, quite too much about it. Uh, I think a lot mm -hmm. of our community members know Binance Smart Chain better than I do. But um, uh, we just want to support it and we'll, we'll, we'll see how things grow. So L2 solution is a little bit harder to use. They're, they're actually a little bit more centralized in some, in some ways. You have to have trust the third party. Um, there's an extra bit of trust uh, in, into a non uh, sort of a, a blockchain entity. And, uh, uh, and uh, BSC is fast enough that it doesn't need an L2 solution just yet. Uh, mm -hmm. In the future, the network may be saturated and then uh, the L2 solutions will come. But I think all of those, all of those innovations are great um, and just helps the industry grow. Yeah, um, when you talk about L2 being a bit too, decent, uh, too centralized, sorry. Also some critics also mentioned that uh, BSC is a bit too centralized. Mm. So what do you think about that? And, and what level of decentralized is, is good? Sure. So BSC unfortunately suffers a little bit of the uh, this accusation because he has the Binance name. Mm -hmm. um, Binance, uh, the Binance brand, the, this name is being lended to many different uh, 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 use cases. Um, we have a Binance centralized exchange um, that is centralized. By Binance Smart Chain is not centralized at all. Uh, no one, we, uh, no one controls the, uh, the the blockchain. Um, the nodes are run by 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 different people in the community. We do run two nodes uh, out of the twenty one. So, uh, uh, but other than that, most um, all of the other nodes are run by other people. So, um, uh, and. Similar to Ethereum, um, uh, uh, Binance Smart Chain or, uh, and Ethereum both have the fund, both can associate with the funder. So uh, with Binance is me, with uh, Ethereum is Vitalik. Um, that makes it slightly more centralized. Probably we do have more influence than other people in the in the community. So compared to uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin there's there's no one in charge. Well, there's no we don't even know who the founder is. So there's no influence <laughs> there. So. Um, so uh, decentralization has many different uh, aspects to it, depending on which aspect you're looking at. Uh, in terms of BNB distribution, uh, BNB is probably one of the most uh, well-distributed coins at this stage, uh, given the uh, almost uh, uh, Binance.com have the largest user base in the crypto space and uh, quite a large number of them have crypto. If you look on the blockchain, the address distribution is not reflective of that because a lot of them hold on, uh, a lot of users are on Binance.com. But I think overall, Binance Smart Chain is a completely decentralized blockchain. Um, it's completely, uh, in my view, is completely uh, uh, decentralized to the point when there are, when there's a rug pull, there's some scammers, and people will ask us to freeze that transaction or freeze that address. We can't do it. We we don't have the ability to do it. So um, um, so it, it is very decentralized in that sense, and people hold their own keys, etc. So depending on uh, everybody can hold their own view. And at the end of the day, if people don't like it, they don't have to use it. If people like it, people use it. But the, the current numbers show that um, it's, it, it is the most used DeFi blockchain today. Mm -hmm. um, so for this year, DeFi industry, we have seen much more attacks and exploit to smart contract, of course, because the industry is growing very fast. Um, how about for BSC? Um, will there be any um, enforcement of more smart contract auditing in the future? Yeah, so um, uh, we uh, yes, so basically this this there's a there's a I would say probably equal or high number of uh, uh, rug pulls uh, scammers uh, in any decentralized world and a Binance Smart Chain because it has the largest number of active users, and that's where the hackers uh, scammers want to target, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. And there's very lit uh, there's very little we can do on the blockchain itself. As I said, we don't control it. We can't re we can't pause uh, freeze transactions, etc. Um, we do do a number of things to try to fight uh, uh, the scams. Uh, number one is uh, we have the Binance Ecosystem Fund, which actually uh, sponsors a lot of the security audits. Uh, so we have a number of partners, including Certic and other sort of third party independent security, uh, blockchain security projects that do audits, et cetera. Uh, so we actually, the Binance uh, Smart Chain Ecosystem Fund actually uh, sponsors a lot of the um, security audits for third party projects, not just like projects Binance launches, et cetera. So we actually pay for the uh, security audit costs uh, for that. Um, we do a lot of educational efforts. 
Uh, for the rug pulls of scammers, if the funds flow to Binance.com, the centralized exchange, uh, we then freeze it, uh, and then we, uh, we ask we ask questions and we try to return funds to the users. Um, there has been a couple of rug pulls where even though the funds didn't come to Binance.com, we tracked the funds uh, flows uh, on the blockchain, and we were able to figure out uh, with very very high accuracy who likely are the uh, other people involved in those scams, and we we we. we we communicated with them, said, look, the right thing to do is return those funds. Uh, and this is a scam that involves $36 million and they actually return the funds to the users. So we do our, we do our part in, in tracking. Um, there are other cases where we couldn't get through uh, or they don't listen and we, we, we work with local law enforcement. So um, and so we do a number of things that we we try to 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 do, but I think the most fundamental fundamental part is education. So we try we do try to educate users very heavily on on this type of uh, 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 how to protect yourself, etc. So there's a number of things we can do, but there's also limitations on how far we can go. We don't control the blockchain. Um, um, uh, anybody using a decentralized blockchain system needs to needs to learn to protect themselves. Okay. Um, maybe shift gear to institutional adoption. Um, there's a lot of uh, excitement about institutionals adopting crypto and now even DeFi. So curious, yeah, what do you think about the opportunity here? Will Binance and BSC, you know, have um, anything that will target institutionals? Yes, yes. So um, uh, we do. We have seen uh, very strong growth in the institution, institutional adoption of crypto, both on the uh, centralized exchange side and mm -hmm. also on DeFi. Uh, we have seen a, um, a, a huge amount of growth in terms of institutional uptake, in terms of uh, 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 funds, uh, large institutions coming to the space. And we actually have also seen quite a, a large number of them moving to DeFi. So they used to trade very heavily on Binance.com. And then we asked them, hey, why is your, your trading volume dropped a bit? They said, well, I'm mine, and we're busy mining on DeFi. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we've seen quite a lot of that, and especially in Asia, where, um, where in the US, the uh, large institutions have less access to DeFi. Whereas in, in Asia, um, they they have uh, they have more access. So we've seen a lot of those, uh, and we're also seeing family offices getting really interested um, in in crypto, um, and that number has grown quite a lot. So may, basically, basically, many wealthy families are now moving their assets into crypto. So all of those things are happening, and it's, it's pretty interesting to see because quite a lot of them have a lot of money. Um, uh, they manage large amount of funds, but they're very basic crypto users. So we have to like sort of handhold them, teach them, etc. Um, but they they are they are financially very sophisticated. So th uh, they 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 follow the money. Um, they follow the returns, and the returns are much higher in crypto right now than in traditional industries. So we see we're seeing a large number of them coming in. Mm, very interested in uh, what you talk about institutions that start adopting DeFi. Is that more of the hedge fund type or? Uh, both. I think the hedge funds started first. Um, they mm -hmm. have uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, institutional hedge funds, like they, they started mining because the returns are high um, and they are on DeFi, etc. And those are sort of the first wave of um, uh, the, uh, what we call the sophisticated crypto native uh, uh, traders. But then we also seen other people come in because of that, because people talk, right? So uh, they mm -hmm. learn that, oh, look, look, the return, you can get like 10x, oh, not 10x, uh, more than double digit percentage returns on APYs, which you don't get in traditional in industries at all. Uh, and your money is just sitting there getting inflated um, or getting devalued by inflation. So um, uh, we've seen quite a lot of that. And uh, to the point where, um, yeah, so the, the, that's when like that triggered me saying, look, well, we need to, we, well, well, we need to promote DeFi. Um, so we need to, we need to push a DeFi platform. Luckily, BSC became that. Um, that we got very lucky mm -hmm. there. Mm, got it. I'm I'm very curious about your view because uh, we saw Compound and Awe approach institutional DeFi in different way. So for Compound, they do um, you know very uh, simple way for institution to use DeFi by offering this like four percent fixed interest, and uh, the institution can just deposit USD in, take USD out. And then they just take that USD that uh, deposit and then go do you farming into compile. But uh, for our way, it's completely different. It's more the KYC AML for the institution to get into our way pro pool. Um, so that pool is a permission pool. And then uh, the institutions continue to get the floating rate. Yeah, what, what do you think about different type of approach? What will work, what do not work? Yeah, I think uh, what you described is one of the most obvious ones. Um, mm -hmm. So we have institutions that came to us and says, look, we have $100 million in the bank. Uh, we're going to take 
put take ten percent of of that out, and that that hundred million is we're earning like point one percent one percent interest uh, at the bank. And they say, well, I'm going to take a uh, uh, 10% of it out, a 50% of it out, and convert it to, to stable coins, which earn, uh, and then put in a DeFi liquidity pool, which typically earns like 8% or more, um, <laughs> which they couldn't get. Um, they want they spread it out into a few different pools to minimize the sort of uh, rock pool risks, uh, security risks, et cetera. Um, and, but when they manage that well, um, they get very decent returns. And um, they're actually telling the bank that I was sitting in a room together with their banker and they're telling the banks should take the money, you know, put it on DeFi. So traditional banks <laughs> should, be, should be doing that. So um, there are those discussions going on where, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the yield the farming is one of the very obvious use cases, but we'll also see, um, uh, we'll also see institutionals investing in NFTs now. So there are art collectors who are not in the traditional sort of, uh, who are not in the crypto space, but now they're moving money into crypto to buy NFTs and to buy art. Um, and they're still exper experiment with small amounts of money, but um, um, it, it's happening. So we've seen all kinds of different adoptions that we didn't foresee before. Uh, mm, that's very interesting. Thanks, Cici. Yeah. Um, maybe talking a bit about regulations, um, you recently wrote a memo called Reflecting on Progress and the Road Ahead, where you talk about you know, many efforts that Binance is making on the regulatory front. Maybe can you talk a bit about that and how do you see the regulatory landscape? Sure, sure. So um, I think, well, especially given in the last couple of months, we've seen a very big shift in the regulatory uh, interest and scrutiny in this space, mm -hmm. um, which wasn't, uh, 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 we, so I think over the last few years, when we first started, um, not like how do you classify cryptocurrency was the question. Everyone's debating whether it's an asset, uh, uh, whether it's a security, et cetera. So now um, I think the, uh, uh, regardless of its classification, it, it, the, uh, the, uh, the message is very loud and clear that look, regulators are really uh, want to they, they want to regulate the space heavily now. Um, so I think from from our perspective uh, for Binance, um, we really have to make a big pivot uh, from a technology startup into a financial services company. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think uh, that mindset we have to we have to shift. Um, and I would also encourage most other technology uh, companies or startups in the space to have that mindset going forward because uh, we now operate in a very relatively heavily uh, regulated space now. And, um, uh, and we, there's a number of things we can do, uh, Binance will do to sort of uh, uh, address some of the lang ch uh, changing landscapes. Uh, we need to continue to significantly increase our uh, compliance team size. Uh, so we are hiring many traditional compliance people, also ex-regulators. So this way they they join our organization that knows what's going on here and they can they can use the same language that you to stay, to speak to their ex-colleagues, um, et cetera. So then now the communication will be better. I think so far Binance have not done a great job communicating with regulators. Uh, it's not one of our core strength. Um, I'm a tech guy, so organizations kind of follow their uh, uh, founders' personalities. So we, we're hiring large teams in this area so that we want to have smooth communication, have proper, have much stronger processes, and we need to localize this by country. So every country have slightly different rules now. Um, so it's not one rule that fits all. Um, so we need to uh, we need to segregate our product service offerings per geo, per location much more uh, much more um, specifically. So we're we're doing product changes. Um, to the point, I think to be honest, I think right now if we if, if uh, I'm actually looking for a senior. Uh, person with strong compliance background, with strong regulatory background, to lead the entire organization, maybe maybe become the Binance, the new Binance CEO. Um, I think I'm a tech entrepreneur, um, so I've taken I've 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 I've, I've led the company for four years, um, and it's good. And I think we got we got to go through this pivot. When we're going through this pivot, I may um, I don't think I'm the best person to lead that effort. I think having somebody who's with a very strong regulatory background is actually better. So I think for the entire industry, uh, we should we should uh, we need to make pivots. Um, so um, I think right now uh, crypto is very much uh, and uh, understood as a financial asset type, and um, uh, we just got to treat it as such, and we got we got to run the company as such. Wow, um, the audience out there, if you are qualified, please submit resume to CC after this. Yes, we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, so, see, how about in terms of IPO? We have seen a crypto company Coinbase IPO, and then now USDC Circle and Bullish are talking about going IPO as well. Mm. Do we ever see Binance IPO at, at some point? 
Uh, yeah. So, um, I, well, uh, yes and no. So, uh, so uh, kudos to Coinbase who pioneered this uh, IPO route for in the U.S. Now there's a playbook in the U.S. for U.S. organizations to IPO, and um, so I think right now um, our partner in the U.S. Binance U.S. is looking at uh, the potential IPO route. Um, they don't. They're not hundred percent fixed yet. But um, uh, now in the U.S., there's a there's a proper way to get VC money, raise money. There's a proper way to run exchange. There's a proper way for this exchange to be recognized, for this operation to be recognized, um, and get listed on Nasdaq. So I think that's a huge achievement. So I think um, a lot of the U.S. Uh, companies, including the uh, sort of uh, uh, the Binance entities in uh, in the U.S., um, are looking at that. Um, the rest, the rest of the world, I think people are looking at that as well. It's still a bit early stage. There's no other precedence in other countries, mm -hmm. so we, we, we're 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 just watching to see how the, how that goes. Um, one of the things that um, as related to the previous question is um, uh, most of the regulators want a they, they they used to a certain structure for a company. They want to see a headquarters. They want to see an office. They want to see like you know um, uh, a legal entity, um, etc. So for the exchange, um, I think we, we are uh, setting up those structures so that it's easy for the regulators to understand. And one of the difficulties we had before was, okay, when we say we don't have a headquarter, um, some people think we're dodgy, but it's just that we are a global business. We don't, we're, we're virtual, we're online all the time. So, um, but now we're, we're setting, up, setting up those structures. Um, so once those structures are in place, you may make, you may make it easier for, those, for, for an IPO to, uh, to happen. So that's not out of the question, but I think right now um, we're, we're still early stages. We're, just, we're, just lo we're looking at how to structure so that it's easy for us to be regulatory compliant. Um, in terms of everything, uh, in, in terms of headquarter office, um, and it's just easier. To, it's just easier for the to tick, tick off boxes instead of them asking questions. How come you don't have a headquarter? So we're saying, okay, let's you know, let's uh, 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 let's set up the structures so, to do that. But once the, once that's done, um, uh, IPO is not out of the question, but it's uh, it's not immediately needed for, for Binance right now. So um, we, we are, we are self-sufficient. Um, uh, we are growing very healthily. So uh, IPO, yeah, may, maybe later, but um, uh, right now, no, no direct plans, but things may change. Mm, okay. Uh, want to ask the question on derivatives a little bit, because uh, July month is the first time that we see the volume on uh, derivatives market actually go above the spot market. So how do you think about the potential derivatives? Yeah, okay. well, as the overall of the crypto. Yeah, so um, uh, so we actually have seen derivative market volumes higher than spot for uh, many, many times, um, mm -hmm. depending on different days. Yeah. Typically what happens is when the market is flat, uh, like it is now, uh, Bitcoin staying at 30,000, um, the derivatives markets are much more active because when the market is flat, people want to take leverage. Uh, so then they amplify the, uh, uh, the swings. Um, the active traders actually want that. Um, and when the market is volatile enough, um, then people don't use leverage. Uh, people, uh, people are afraid to get liquidated, et cetera. So they just use spot. So when, we, when, when the price moves significantly, we see more of the volume shifting to spot. And when the price is stable, we see more users using, uh, using, using, using derivatives. So that's all, that has always been the case. And in traditional markets, derivative markets are usually 10x larger than spot markets. Um, mm -hmm. Because all the speculators typically uh, 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 congregate at, at the um, uh, at, at, in the derivative market, it is cheaper to trade. Uh, it is lower cost. Uh, it is lower capital uh, capital intensive. You don't have to hold all your funds there to trade, you, um, get, because you can use leverage. Uh, it is higher risk uh, for normal people, so I actually don't rec don't really recommend most normal people to use uh, leverage. So, um, but uh, yeah, it is one of those traditional financial instruments that's available. That's also available in crypto. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, um, that's that's just how it works. Got it. Yeah, we're running out of time. CC, I could talk to you for another one hour. But yeah, thank you so much for coming to be with us today and looking forward to having you back again next time. Yeah, th thank, thank you, you for so having much. me here. And thanks everyone for listening. Cheers.